Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining today's webinar, Getting People's Attention Using the Brain for Presentations and Meeting Management. My name is Matt Caton. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar. It's one that I am particularly fond of. I use the brain quite often for presentations, uh, usually presenting uh, on the brain, in the brain, and that's exactly what I'm going to be doing today. I usually do it without bringing attention to the fact that I'm using the brain uh, to present the brain, but today I'm doing just that. We're gonna be talking about how you can close PowerPoint or whatever your uh, presentation tool may be and use something a little more intriguing, interactive with your audience and uh, something that can help you really convey your message and influence your audience in many, many different ways and that is with using the brain. So I'm going to be sharing with you some very specific tips uh, that you need to know or, or should know to really polish up your presentations uh, using the brain software. Now, if you're just getting started with the brain, you can download the application from www.thebrain.com forward slash download. You can download a free 30-day trial and I do suggest that you sign up for a Brain 101 class. Uh, this week's class is on Thursday, tomorrow, at, um, well, it depends on your time zone, but you can sign up on our website at thebrain.com for Brain 101 class. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you a few more advanced features of the application and features that will really help you share your brain, present your brain to an audience or utilize your brain to manage meetings, and give more polished presentations. Now, right now, I have the brain open in what we call wander mode. So wander means it's hands-free. There's my camera. I'm, I'm not clicking on, on anything right now. So you may see the brain just slowly navigating from thought to thought. I'm not sure if the go-to meeting uh, is really animating smoothly the, the brain the, the way I'm seeing it on my screen right now, going through the go-to meeting uh, there may be a little bit of a, of a lag. I'm actually going to click on the background, and that will pause the wander. And I'll talk about wander mode in, in just a moment. And I'm going to quickly navigate to the home thought. And I'm actually using the brain itself uh, to talk about how we can use the brain for presentations. And so the brain is actually going to guide me through uh, today's presentation. And you can do this too, and there's a number of different ways that, that, uh, that you can do this. As you can see, I'm simply going to be clicking from thought to thought to guide me through a, a process. And uh, basically the three phases for a better presentation is the thought that I clicked on. And now I select one of the child thoughts or subcategories down below to get started. So I'm gonna start with before the presentation. And this is where I'll, uh, I'll launch uh, uh, today's sort of training webinar and go through these step by step. Now, one thing that you can do as a presenter, this may be available to you, and it's one of the features of the brain that will really help, is the tabbed interface. The tabbed interface allows me to have multiple brains open at one time. Now, I'll be clicking to actually jump into these individual brains throughout the call today, and I can quickly get from thought to thought or brain to brain by clicking on the tabs. But if you recall, I'm using the brain itself as my, as my guide, as my script that I'm going to be following. So since I have the same brain open in two separate windows, I can actually click and drag this brain into a separate window. And luckily for me, I can drag over onto another monitor. So now I can return to the brain for presentations, click down to three phases, go into phase one and start talking about these. I actually have this same brain open over here on my other monitor. So I can refer back, what did I do? Have I hit phase one, phase two, phase three, et cetera? So my script is available to me in another, uh, in another window. Um, additionally, there's a more advanced feature of the brain that allows you to copy groups of thoughts. So you can map out your process, if you'd like, by, I'm going to control click on a series of thoughts here. So I control click, 
then I do a regular click, but control clicking is adding thoughts into um, my selection box. And I'll navigate over to after presentation, control click on these. So I've gathered this group of thoughts, I've control clicked on them. On a Mac, you would command click. And that actually grabs all of these thoughts. I can right click and copy as a text outline. Now I can open up Word or any type of text uh, I'll just open up Notepad. Oops, if I can spell correctly. Now I can just launch Notepad. I've copied these thoughts onto my clipboard, an outline of these thoughts. There's Notepad opening on my other monitor. And I can right click and paste. And I've got a nice little outline of everything that I'll be covering in today's webinar. So really quickly, that is, um, uh, that is one issue, or excuse me, I just read a, a note that there was an, possibly an issue with the webinar, but it looks like I'm seeing everyone just fine. Meta, thank you for joining today. And Manuel, a few people are saying the animation looks good um, and they're logging in. Manuel saying I'm good, so thank you so much. I just got a notification that there was maybe a lag, uh, but it doesn't seem to be on, on this end. So thank you for verifying. So there I've just quickly control clicked on groups of thoughts, copied them into the selection box. I won't spend a lot of time today with the selection box. It's a much more advanced feature of the brain. But as you can see, I can extract out of my brain an outline for today's class, an outline that I've mapped out and developed in the brain. And then I can print that out, take it with me as a little uh, crib sheet or, or uh, keep it posted on another monitor, what have you, for step by step what I'll be navigating through today. So before the presentation, here are a few things that you can do um, in the brain application to prepare yourself for using the brain for a webinar, rather than say, for example, an, a, um, a PowerPoint document. And I will be opening a PowerPoint today to show you side by side, here's what this presentation looks like in PowerPoint, here's what the exact same content, the same presentation looks like in the brain. Um, so step one, as you can see, organize ideas and your agenda. Now I've already done that step by step by creating new thoughts. If I come up with a step six, you can see I can click and drag and I can just say step six is going to be a review with a friend. So step one is really basically saying build your brain. and. Uh, um, and then through these process, we'll talk about different attributes you can add to your brain to really spice things up. Um, step two is pin key thoughts. A pin is a shortcut to a thought in the brain. And it's really important before you step into a presentation, if you've got a very large presentation uh, with, if you're speaking of PowerPoint slides, 60, 70, 100 slides, well, that means 60, 70, or 100 thoughts in the brain. If things don't go well for you or you run out of time, but you really need to close, you really need to really drive home some, some key events, it's important to have those set up as pins. So if today I don't get through everything, but I really want to sum up why use the brain for presentation, I've got a nice little pin so I can get directly to that why thought if I don't get there in time. A lot of questions come up. I get sidetracked, whatever the case may be. And of course, I can use the brain's past thought list to return exactly to where I was before I skipped ahead in my presentation. And that's really a key advantage of using the brain over uh, something such as PowerPoint. I can get to a specific location very quickly and very easily without having to skip slides, which is a very I would almost say unprofessional process of using PowerPoint for you to say, ah, oh, these slides don't pertain to you, I'll skip through them. You might as well be saying, you weren't important enough for me to, to polish out this, uh, uh, this webinar. And I'm getting a lot of notes from uh, folks at the brain saying they can't log into the webinar, but I can see we've got almost, well, over 100 people logged in and people have uh, said they could see everything just fine. So I'm gonna keep on uh, moving right ahead. So um, let's go ahead and move on to step three. Step three is adding zoomable icons. Now step three, there's a lot that, uh, that can go on with it. So thank you, Brigitte. Thank you everyone at the office for those notifications. You can stop the IMs now. 
uh, as I'm presenting. And that's another key component before you present, whether you're using the brain or, or PowerPoint or whatever the case may be, close your chat window so, uh, so that you're uh, never interrupted. That's not necessarily brain specific, so that's why I faltered on, uh, on that feature today. Uh, so regardless, uh, zoomable icons, a zoomable, zoomable icon in the brain is something that I'll really be highlighting today. I absolutely love adding images, graphics into my brain. Now those can be added as attachments into the notes. Today I'm focused on these zoomable icons. So you never need to leave what we call the plex of the brain. I can just hover over a thought, whatever image I've placed on that thought can actually zoom in or on the uh, on the screen. So there you can see I just have a picture of binoculars and I can quickly identify that, uh, uh, you know, that image. Maybe I want to add pie charts, graphs, images, of products, etc. Zoomable icons are a key component. And then we get into thought types and tags. Um, I'll be sharing a brain specifically where thought types and tags are, are key components uh, of the brain to add additional attributes to the information you're, uh, you're presenting, but it also gives you a lot of flexibility in navigation and sort of uh, highlighting a, a focus of a particular topic or a particular area. And then we move into adjusting your animation speed. So this actually happens in the options. If you open your brain, click on options and go into preferences. Um, right here on the screen, you can see I've slowed my navigation speed down so that it, it presents well. If I speed my navigation speed up, it's very jumpy and jittery, and that might work for me on a daily basis. I move quickly and I just wanna click, 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 navigate to a thought. For a presentation, wanna make sure everything is absorbed. For a meeting, I wanna give people time to take their notes. So I slow my animation speed down. And you can change, if you are gonna be using this wander feature, how long you actually stay on a particular thought. Are you on that thought for zero seconds and it wanders on to the next? Or do you want people to be able to see and read that thought title for 20 seconds before it moves on to the next? So there's an adjustment that can be made there. So you set up your adjustments, set up your wallpaper, the layout of the brain, and then move on to step six, reviewing with a friend. So now it's presentation time. So let's jump over to during the presentation. So step one, as you can see, is wander the brain before the meeting starts. And that's exactly what I did when you were logging into today's webinar. You may have seen tidbits of my brain move across the screen, just to give you a taste, a preview of what we're going to be covering today. So let's talk a little bit about wander. Now I have purposefully left my notes, even though I don't have a lot of notes in this area of the brain, I've left my notes window open. And as you can see, I've got my tabs across the top for the other brains. I am going to click on options and go into wander mode. And you'll notice as soon as I'm in wander mode, the notes section goes away. So I'm focused on just the thoughts and they're obeying those presets that I've set up. So it's hovering on a thought for anywhere from two to five seconds. And then it just randomly selects another thought and, and navigates to that thought. Really, really great for a head of presentations just to give people an idea of, wow, we're gonna be seeing something different today. Oh, we're gonna be covering uh, animation speeds, pinning thoughts, et cetera. Just different key topics to entice your audience a little bit uh, before you get started. And of course, as soon as you click on the background, you exit wander mode, the notes are back and I can utilize either the past thought list um, or I can use my pins to quickly navigate back to a particular area of the brain that I was just recently in. So there I've navigated back to, let me just rearrange my sizing here, uh, right back to during the presentation. And the next is something that we call presentation mode. So once again, notice right now, I'm purposely floating my brain. My tool tab is open down below. I can minimize a few things and actually turn this on. So I can ahead of time set my window up, set my wallpaper in the background, whatever, what have you, minimize the, the toolbar down below, or I can just simply very quickly uh, click on view and go right into what we call presentation mode. So now 
as you can see, the brain goes into full screen. I st in this view, I still have my notes. Sometimes I want that, that information to be shared. If I don't need that, I can utilize these buttons here on the bar that separates the Plex from your notes to minimize the notes. So the notes are out of the way. I'm full screen with the Plex. Even my tabs uh, and the rest of the brain window is unnecessary right now. I want my audience to focus on the current thought that I'm talking about. My script is over here on my other monitor, but what the audience sees is right here front and center and I have everyone's full focus and attention on my current thought. And that, go, that is, once again, presentation mode. I still have access to my pins if I need a quick shortcut, so I can go to the after presentation. We're not there yet, we'll get there soon. And I can use my past thought list, so I can go right back to phase two, which is presentation mode. And then into, during the presentation, step three, mind map and outline view. So far, for today's presentation and seeing the brain, we've been in what we call normal view. Normal view is the current active thought with one generation of related thoughts displaying around it. So you can see I've got no child thoughts down below. Let me just navigate up to an area that's a little more interesting. So the three phases for better presentations. And I've got one generation away from this thought. The normal view really focuses your attention or people's attention in, uh, in a presentation on the current act of thought one generation away, uh, away from it. But we can go into outline or mind map view. So I'm going to escape out of presentation mode. I just hit the escape key and I bring my brain back into a floating view. There's keyboard shortcuts too. I could have used a keyboard shortcut to get into outline or um, a mind map view while staying in presentation mode. Uh, but I'll exit presentation mode and switch to a little button here into outline view. So outline view allows you to decide what you want to be displayed on the screen in a very linear format. So you can see we started at the brains for presentations, moved on to the three phases, one, two, and three and we can see all of what those three phases are on the screen at one time. And it really depends on your screen real estate, um, how much screen size you have. I demonstrate or I uh, demo on a very low res on a smaller monitor, so there's not as many pixels to sort of fit through the bandwidth for these presentations. Um, however, if I had a much larger presentation, I could adjust the size of my Plex so using the slider here, you can see I can make very small fonts or very large for my thought names. And in this particular view, when you hover over a thought, you can decide whether you want to collapse the thought, little minus sign, or if you want to expand the thought, little plus sign. So we've already wrapped up and we've discussed everything that happens before the presentation. You have had Plenty of time to take notes if I'm demoing for a, a, a lecture or for a class or a meeting, so I can minimize that. And now we're moving on to during the presentation. And if we skip all the way down to step five, creating new thoughts, we're gonna get there in a second, I can expand that and collective brainstorming, I can expand that as well. So I can choose when to expand a thought and what I wanna leave on the screen at any time. So that's mind map and, and um, outline view being able to uh, collapse or expand groups of thoughts and really get the big picture. On a personal level, this particular view is also really just great for brainstorming. How does, how's my class fitting together? I'm gonna present this. Is everything here that I wanna see? Well, I can expand everything, make my fonts a little smaller. So this could have been a phase in step one for review. Well, review with a friend, we can sit back and say, okay, is it all there? Do we cover everything? Let's add some more under review with a friend. I can type in expanded view or click and drag down to mind map. How does, is this presentation going to look in mind map? So I'm linking distant thoughts to one another with this view as well. And of course, at any time, I can come back to normal view. Uh, so there's a few more steps during the presentation. Um, instant activate. Instant Activate is a setting, once again, in Options and Preferences, and it's really a, uh, whether or not you are going to be creating new content. 
in your presentation. That's one of the great things about the brain too, is that your presentations can be interactive. If someone brings up a new subject or a new idea, and you want to actually add that, as you've seen me add a new thought, step six, review, review with your friend. You're adding new content in an interactive meeting, and uh, instant activate simply means, and that's on the behavior tab, when you create a new thought, here's the checkbox right here, that new thought is instantly going to be activated in your brain. So if I select this and I add a new thought called new idea, it goes directly to that new idea thought, and that's when I can open up and expand the notes, add my notes, my attachments, my content, etc. So that's, a, again, personal choice if that's a feature you're going to want to use. I typically keep that off, so really quickly, I'll just fly through this and right into the behavior tab and uncheck that setting. But I wanted to share that with you just so you know those features are available. And finally, step five is creating new thoughts from the discussion. QA portion of, the, of your presentation, or maybe you're using the brain for meeting management. Your meeting shouldn't be you standing up just telling everyone, everybody what to do. That's not a meeting, that's a, that's a lecture. Uh, a meeting is more interactive, people have ideas, you need to respect those and, and discuss them, et cetera. So you're creating information on the fly. And I won't create anything here now in this brain, you'll see me do that in my other sample brains. And then finally, step five, oh, excuse me, let's go back. Uh, step three of the three phases, phase three I should say, is after the presentation. Now that you've given your presentation, what comes next? Are you just, you're done, you gave your speech, everyone saw your stuff, uh, it's time to move on? Typically not, usually you are, maybe you're selling something, maybe you're uh, enticing people to sign up for uh, a class, an event, whatever the case may be, you want there to be a takeaway. You want people to be able to gain something uh, from the presentation or from the meeting that just uh, took place. So you're adding meeting notes into uh, the brain as you go that can be printed out and shared with your colleagues. Um, you're continuing to store information in this brain. So in other words, you still have your brain and it can build and evolve over time. Um, and a couple of other things uh, make your brain a team brain. Team brain I'll talk about a little bit later in the demo today so people can actually interact in the same brain. Uh, something that is very difficult to do with a PowerPoint presentation. You send off a PowerPoint presentation to three other people. Uh, they all make their changes and send it back to you. It's up to you to sort of pick and choose which slides work and how to merge them all together. You can share a brain so that multiple people are interacting and are editors in the same brain database. Or you can simply publish your brain. You want to be the only presenter. You publish your brain to the cloud. So I click on the sync button and it syncs all the most recent changes. All this data is available online. And I've got a URL that I can share with my colleagues or, or with my audience uh, so they can review everything that we discuss at their own leisure um, through a, a link to the same brain that you presented online. And everyone joining today's webinar is going to get a link to either download a copy of this, and that's what this send brain zip to attendees. You zip up the entire brain, send a copy to your attendees, or a link to this brain on the cloud at apps.thebrain.com. And attendees of this class will get both. A link to download the, in this case, it's actually called a BRZ, a brain archive. Uh, older copies of the brain were called brain zips. And you'll have a link so you can visit this brain that I'm in right now in the web. So let's go ahead and put some of these ideas into, uh, into motion in a real presentation. The first one that I'm going to jump into, I'm rolling all the way back to thought types and tags. So uh, teachers are really professional presenters. They're lecturing, they're teaching. Uh, they're presenting information and hoping that their students absorb this information. So it's a great example of how we can use some of today's lessons in a real world application. Again, this brain is also available for download as well. And there's, this brain is massive. There's a lot of information, different samples of data um, in this brain that we use for different uh, types of webinars. But today, 
I'm using an area of this brain to give a presentation on US presidents. So notice I'm gonna click down through my different courses, language arts, mathematics, science, and social studies, just so you can see a little background of this brain. Again, a lot of information is in here, but if we go get into political science, uh, United States government, and I've got a link for United States presidents. So let's say I'm giving a lecture on US presidents. And below here, there's a lot of everything that I've talked about so far. I'm gonna minimize the notes. I'm really not focused on content or attachments, even though it's there, I'm not focused on that right now. But first off, you can see I'm using zoomable icons. If you see a strange name in here, you don't know the uh, US president's names very well, James Buchanan. What did James Buchanan look like? There's a handsome fellow right there. Um, so you can hover over um, all of their official portraits uh, for each individual president. Uh, but there's a lot more than that. Rather than just having a list of U.S. presidents, and of course, if I click on the president, I've got a link to his Wikipedia page, which tells me all of his information. Uh, some of it is even linked to other information related uh, to whatever we're, uh, we're teaching in the class. If I click on uh, Frank FDR, Roosevelt, um, I can see more. I can see that he's a Democrat. He is uh, the, sort of the author of the New Deal, which is a result of the Great Impression, uh, the Great Depression, excuse me, and everything that el else that it's related to. But more than that, just hovering on this or uh, thing put on the U.S. president, you can see I have them in numerical order, one through 45. And uh, obviously, George Washington, number one, John Adams, number two, fast forward to uh, you know, number 16, few numbers that I know, Abraham Lincoln, et cetera. So uh, that is a listing of the presidents in order. But now maybe the discussion takes a turn and we talk about the sort of balance between uh, Democrats and, and, and Republicans. I can actually change the view on the fly of the brain. I right click in the background and I select to arrange thoughts by thought type. So a thought type is an extra classification. And when I hover over, I can see Thomas Jefferson is a Democrat. All the presidents whose names are in blue are Democrats. Abraham Lincoln, Ulysses S. Grant, those are Republicans. There are, and I didn't realize this until uh, this brain was, was put together. I didn't construct this brain, a colleague of mine did. Uh, there were five Federalist US presidents. I didn't even know that before uh, this uh, this brain came around. And there they are. And more surprisingly than that, there were two U.S. presidents that officially had no affiliation to any type of, of party, Republican, Democrat, Federalist. Uh, now we've got Green Party and all kinds of things floating around out there, sort of names that, that pop up. Uh, none that have been president, but if they do, that classification would be uh, visible here within the brain. So it's just a really another great way to change the view of your presentation, change the topic. We went straight from, uh, you know, order one through 45 into ordered by when these, or excuse me, what uh, party they're affiliated with. And there's a few different views in your brain and you can really play around to see what works best for you. I can arrange thoughts by the date they were created. So obviously the most recent uh, presidents were created last. We basically, this brain started with one through 45. So you can see 45, 44, 43 were the last ones to be created. In the beginning, 32, then one, two, three. So for whatever reason, we had created FDR in this brain before George Washington, John Adams, et cetera. But that's in the order they were originally created. Your brain is keeping track of every change, every modification. Uh, when you create a new thought, let's say we have thought number 46. Don't know who that will be yet, so it's just a thought called 46. But if I click on that thought and click on the little uh, hourglass, you can see I created and, and the creation and the link of that thought happened at the same time. Uh, but there's a history of every individual thought in your brain when it was created, when it was modified, et cetera. So you've got some additional information if it's needed about slides you're presenting or content that you're uh, presenting to your audience. And of course, at any time, if I find I don't need something, 
I can just shift right click on that thought and delete it. So there's still time to create that 46 thought. You can leave that there and go back to uh, arrange thoughts by name, the original setting. So I can flip in and out of different views and utilize those thought types. So let's talk really quickly about how to create a thought type. I don't think I have a thought type yet for Green Party. I'll see if I do. Here's my list of all the different thoughts. There's quite a few because there's so many science thoughts, et cetera, in this brain. I don't see Green Party. There's Democrat and there's Republican. I am going to create a new thought type called Green Party. So I've, by doing that, not creating, clicking and dragging in the brain itself, but going up to your thought types or your tag list, you can create a new thought type that way. I can also create the thought, it'll be a native thought, but then you can right click and on an individual thought and change its, its thought type that way, convert. There was a convert setting there, so you can convert it to a thought type or tag. So there's Green Party, and I want to create a, uh, basically I want to group, as you can see in my listing of thought types, Democrat, uh, Republican, and there's green. They're all sort of spaced out. I'm going to group those together and I'm going to create a parent thought called, parent thought type called political party. So as you can see, that created a native thought. I didn't create it here in the part, in the thought type dropdown. So I right click on this thought and I am going to convert, as you can see, to a thought type. So political party green, I'm going to link up to that Republican. There's the, you can see a thought type has little circular edges. So I know that's the Republican thought type. I'll double click to link and I'll go to Democrats and double click. So now you can see all of my political parties uh, are grouped together under a thought type called political party. And when I look at my thought type list, you can see they're now all grouped together. I can go straight to political party, Democrat, Green, or Republican. Obviously, we'll change this to Green. And to be very honest with you, I'm not sure if the Green Party is even still in, I think it is, but it's still around. But uh, regardless, I'm not taking any sides here. I'm just color coding my thought. So I clicked on a thought, to open up the thought properties and change the color code of, uh, of that thought. So I can very quickly visually identify uh, a thought type. So that's a little bit more about thought types, setting up thought types in your brain and how they can be used during your presentation. So you can see groups of important thought types. And of course, I used a, a political reference, but you can use, here's parts that are, um, back ordered for your uh, you know presenting for your company here's parts that are overstocked um, or here's tasks that are complete incomplete etc in a meeting whatever works best for your environment so let's change the environment up a little i'm now going to open up a powerpoint slide so i think i have it open and so I've opened up PowerPoint and I have a furniture company, Laura Bloom Furniture, and I'm presenting to a new client. So the first thing I do is I open up PowerPoint. There's no wander mode here. So um, unfortunately, the client has to see me log in and uh, get to slide one. And then, of course, I go to slideshow from the beginning. So I start my slideshow for my client. And there's set up. I'll just minimize that. And I'm on slide one, Laura Bloom Furniture Company, into slide two, talking about our history uh, then and now. And I go into the tools we use and the resources and the people, etc. Well, I'm presenting with someone that has already purchased from me in the past. So they know all of this information. They, they've actually met some of the people in this picture um, and been on site to see our facilities. I don't have to fill them in on the history. And they say specifically, we want to order some spindle armchairs. Can you give us a part number? Can we see what uh, uh, you know other items for dining room furniture that goes with? Oh, sure, right away. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. I'm either exiting and going back into the the PowerPoint to find slide number 28 or 32, 
or I'm just saying, all right, don't worry about this. This is bedroom furniture. Uh, okay, we're into the dining room now. <laughs> There's the chairs. There's the spindle arm chair. So I had to sort of click through to get to slide 20. And they want to see this with a, the table that matches it, the dining room table. Uh, okay, we'll click through. So you can see, oh, there's the sideboard. Is that the table? No, that's not it. There it is. There's the spindle armchair with the table. Okay, that looks great. They're sold. They'd like to place an order for 30 spindle armchairs. What's the part number? Oof, that was slide. I can't remember. Oh, there it went, slide 20. So I'm clicking and navigating in a very, very linear format through my uh, through my PowerPoint presentation. PowerPoint presentation is really, really great for just a lecture environment. There's no feedback from the audience and you know you wanna start at point A and end at point Z one by one. There's no room for uh, venturing off in a different direction or asking questions and show and tell in different areas. Uh, you've got the wrong application. So, it's very difficult to uh, to navigate unless you're in a just a straight line A to Z, and um, it's a little sloppy too, just opening and closing and escaping here. Let's get out of that. And if if you do want to navigate around, once again, you're back into this interface. And if you have to make any changes on the fly um, in the actual presentation, that becomes a little tedious as well as you're clicking and and opening boxes and and adding images, et cetera. So very, very clunky in those respects. So that's my Lower Bloom Furniture presentation in PowerPoint. And if I scroll down, you can see there were, I didn't even get into the modern furniture, et cetera, uh, 31 slides there. And if I go into the brain and click on my home thought, I have 31 thoughts in this particular brain. and. My present presentation starts as soon as the application is open. I simply click on that home thought. I go right to the center thought. And if this is a new client, okay, let's talk about the history. I can go down to history. I could have ordered these, numbered them or what have you. So I go step one, history. Step two, the people. Step three, the catalog. And then step four, the close is, is pricing. But in this case, I can see exactly what I wanna click on. I can minimize the notes. I don't need a script. For this presentation, I'm going to talk about the craftsman. That's a zoomable icon. I just hover over that thought. Someone wants to know specifically about the materials. I can. I don't need to skip ahead or jump from slide to slide. I can just hover over that thought, and there's some information about the different types of materials. Or click on that thought to open up the notes to read the different parts lists, etc. Um, and once again, they're curious in a particular dining room chair along with a matching sideboard or a matching dining room table. So I click into the catalog, that's vintage furniture, and we can go directly to dining room chairs. So here's the different dining room chairs. I simply hover over to find, if they know the name, no, it was the spindle armchair. So there's that spindle armchair. And as you can see, I'm utilizing in this case, my thought tags, not a thought type, but a thought tag and I can see the spindle armchair has been retired. That's some valuable information that I added here into the brain. They cannot order the spindle armchair. We've retired that piece, something that we do from time to time. And so we need to find something comparable and browse and shop around here in my presentation. And it's very easy to jump around uh, because I'm not in that linear slideshow. Um, and when they do find a chair they like, let's just say, all right, it's the, uh, the V-back armchair. Um, this is the chair that they're interested in, and they'd like to purchase 10 of these. Right here from the presentation, I can actually link this up to, again, I've set up my tags ahead of time, or my pins, rather, excuse me. I'm in a meeting right now with Tom Turlington, and if I look at Tom over on the right, I've got all of his notes. So let's start a new note for today's event, today's meeting. I like to just draw a little line separator and push other meeting notes down to the bottom. We've met before, he's a great customer, he knows all about me, I keep track of his different orders here so we can review those. Uh, so today's meeting, I'm going to timestamp, and now suddenly my 
presentation becomes interactive, one-on-one -on -one with the client, and I'm actually placing an order, and I'm being more productive. They're enjoying what they're seeing uh, in, and seeing that I'm actively placing their order during our discussion. So uh, Wednesday, August 14th, I just quickly timestamp that, and I say uh, 10 V back chairs in cherry. Maybe we don't offer cherry. So that's sort of a, a unique thing, a custom order that he's done. I need to make a little checklist for myself. So I'll add a checklist, uh, send pricing, send a sample, and build a prototype first. So a few notes for myself to when I revisit this particular thought, and I'm going to link this thought to that VBAC armchair. So if I'm sitting down and reviewing my brain of, of recent uh, activity that I've had with clients, I get to Tom Turlington's thought, um, I need to know, well, what's, where do I keep the, the molds or the patterns, et cetera, for the VBAC armchair? I don't have to go back browsing through my, uh, through my brain, I can just click or I could hover over a zoomable icon. We actually do offer a cherry, but I can gather that additional information there just by hovering over that particular thought. And I mentioned earlier that I'm using those, um, those tags. So I'm going to add a few tags here. Tom Turlington, I recently met with him. He placed an order. So I add a new tag for it's a current focus. I could create a thought tag called active order. Maybe I'll do that next. But this is one of my current focus. And the VBAC armchair, I'll make that a current focus too, since I have to build 10 of them and sales equal 10. We just sold 10. So the beauty of the thought tag is it not only adds additional information into your brain, uh, but you can add more than one. Here you can see when I hover over the VBAC armchair, I can see it's a current focus and sales equal 10. I can also add let me just minimize these notes again. I'll even add another tag. Oops, click to open up the thought properties. And uh, maybe we are out of inventory, um, so it's out of stock. So 10 have just been ordered. It's the current focus, and we don't have any in inventory right now. That means they're being built from scratch. And so now when I revisit my brain in my next upcoming meeting, I've got a thought for that here in my brain. If I go into my people and my craftsmen do I, that I have company meetings with, we've got another company meeting coming up in September. And you can see on the notes, I already have a checklist of things we're gonna be talking about. We need to find a new wood supplier. Uh, we're thinking about purchasing a kiln dryer and we're gonna review open orders. One of those, here I'll indent this, one of those is, I believe it's Tom Turlington. So I'll type in Tom, and I'm going to double click on that. Oops, double click and link this to an existing thought. I don't need Tom linked up to my September 2019 meeting, but if I'm reviewing the meeting notes, I want to get to Tom Turlington's thought. It's a little bit of a tongue twister, but I want to be able to get to that thought. I highlight a note and I select to link this to another thought. Since I've highlighted it, it knows I'm looking for another thought that contains Tom. I've got three, Tom, Tom Turlington, and Tom and Vicki Anderson. So I'll double click and just link this uh, thought in a note directly to another thought elsewhere in this brain. So those note links, you can see I use them from time to time in the notes. Uh, it's a great way to link two thoughts um, to one another without actually having to visualize the link. And that becomes an important uh, uh, possibility from time to time as well. And of course, I can just sit down at any time and just like I could activate a thought type and view all thoughts that are of that type, I can view all thoughts that are my current focus. So there's actually three. There's the Tom Turlington, VBAC armchair, and as you can see, the director's table. Uh, uh, Logitory Pines, I almost forgot about this, recently ordered 50 of the director's table. So I can get right to that thought and assign this job, et cetera. So this meeting becomes very, very interactive and, uh, and productive as we go. 
So the last component that I want to share with you, we've, we've given presentations now here in our meeting. Oh, I did want to share with you before I jump on to sharing your brain online, zipping your brain up or sharing it online. Um, we've talked about these zoomable icons. I use them so much, but yet I haven't added any yet. So let's do that now. Uh, I'm going to jump in this presentation over to my modern furniture. So I get right to that modern thought. And I've got a few new modern chairs. Modern furniture has become a new thing within my, my uh, company here. And as you can see, I've got zoomable icons of all these different cool, new, very modern pieces of furniture. And I've got a couple of new ones. So let me show you how I bring that content into the brain. You've got many, many different options. And again, we typically cover this in a Brain 101, but since we highlighted it so often today, want to make sure you can see how easy it is because it really, really does make your presentation more effective. Uh, so let's say I've got a chair. Here I've got a picture of a chair called the Pad Rocker. So I could create a new thought. And I could even copy this image. I can copy an image online here. I've got the actual file. I want to copy that image. And I right click and paste right in the notes. That's one option that you have. That image will show up there in, in just a second. Uh, but also, you can paste here in the, for the zoomable icon as well. I've copied that image. I can right click and select Paste Icon. So now that I have that image on my clipboard, you can paste that as a zoomable icon. Very, very easy way to, uh, um, to get content to, to show up in your brain is that zoomable icon. There's two choices right there for you. I've got the image in the notes and the image as the zoomable icon. And you can decide which is going to work best for you. Do you want that quick zoomable icon? And the notes are filled up with part numbers, invoices, scripts, notes, what, what have you. Or do you want the image to show up there in the content window as you're presenting? Whatever really works, works best for your presentation. That's one way is just copy the image paste it in as the, uh, as the icon. Another option, I'll create a new thought. Um, I think I have a web browser open. There it is, Modern Wood Chair. So that's very sleek. Let's say this is our new design. I've got an image of it open on my clipboard. Maybe it's a CAD drawing or an image in Photoshop. But there it is, and we're going to be calling that the, uh, the Clio. So I create a new thought called Clio. And that image, I could copy it, come back into the brain, right click and paste, or right from the brain, when I know that image is behind the brain application, I can click to open up the thought properties. And this little square box here is where I can add an icon to the thought. So I can select a stock icon. I can choose a file if it's an image file that I own. I can paste if I've got it on my clipboard. But here I want to show this capture image. You can also right click on the thought and select capture image. So basically the brain application goes away and you're left with whatever else was on the screen behind the brain application. And now I can simply click and drag. Hopefully you can see on your end, I've got these two little crosshairs and I click and drag and whatever I capture in the middle becomes the image that I've just associated with that thought. So now I've got that nice little zoomable icon of the Clio uh, for that particular thought. So that's how you create those zoomable icons uh, within the brain that you'll be using for your presentation. And now that we have conducted this presentation, we've wrapped everything up, we've taken my customer order, and it's time to send my customer on their way. I can give them a copy of my brain to take with them or send them a link so they can review this brain at a later date. My entire catalog is here. In this case, I probably wouldn't be sharing this brain because I've got customer information. So it really depends on the brain you create, how you want to share and, and what you want to share. Yes, you can take sections of a brain and paste them into a new brain and share just that smaller subset of thoughts. So if you've got a very large brain, customer information, phone numbers, passwords, whatever, you just want to share your catalog. You saw me control clicking on thoughts earlier. I can copy thoughts, paste them into another brain and share just that brain. 
that's a little bit more of an advanced feature, but just so you know, that capability does exist. So let's share this particular brain. I've already synced this brain to the cloud. So those of you that have joined me on the call today, I want to make sure you've got a copy of my Laura Bloom Furniture Brain. This is a fictitious company, by the way. None of this furniture actually exists, and I don't promise to build any of it, even if you do place a, a purchase. Um, so it's just a fictitious company, um, and I'll, I'll share this brain with you now. The quickest and easiest way is to sync it up to the brain cloud. When you click on that sync button, you sync your brain up to app dot the brain dot com and you can go to our brain website click on log in log into your account and access all of your brains through the web interface right from the brain application i can click on online and select open thought in the web client so this takes me out to the brain and launches uh this particular brain and takes me directly to this particular thought as well and so it's just taking a moment to load up. So here is what my brain looks like online. All the content is there. The zoomable icons are all there. So it takes just a moment for that to zoom to its full resolution. Um, and a person can navigate through my brain online. This is a really long convoluted URL. That's not the URL that I want to share with my clients. Back in the brain, again, I can click on that option for online. I can copy a web thought URL. So this web thought URL here, I'll go down into my notes, this brain, and paste. So you can see that's a much nicer, oh, here, let's uh, shift paste. So I get just the text. So uh, this is what the URL looks like. And as you can see, it's a much, much easier URL to tweet, to share. It's much more user friendly. That's the truncated version, and you can get that URL right from within the app. Once you uh, sync this brain to the cloud, you also need to make sure that you've marked this brain as public. Otherwise, if any of you are jotting this information down to see if they can really open my lower bloom brain online, you can as long as I've made this brain publicly accessible. So I click on brain access and sharing. And I need to check this box. So if you're typing in that URL right now and you're maybe typing into the notes, hey, Matt, that link doesn't work, <laughs> it's because I have not made this publicly accessible yet. So I'll go ahead and click to make this brain publicly accessible. There you can see is the web link. That's always going to take you to the home thought of this brain, even if I change what the home thought is. This link will take me to the home thought of my brain online. So I can share that URL as well. And now I'll save this. And this URL takes me to a specific thought. The other URL I could send out that takes you to the home thought of the brain, whatever that may be. And people can access my brain in read-only mode online. The final step is that I can zip this brain up and send someone a BRZ. Uh, let's say I, this brain is a great sort of seed for starting their business, and they just want to change the names and information, what have you, or they just want to click around, add their own information to it, they can certainly do that if they have a copy of this brain. So if I want to create a brain that is, you know, the basis of my class that I'm teaching, or the meeting that we're having, and I want to give everyone a copy so that you, you can add your information into the, this, uh, this particular brain and keep your own copy, I'll click on File and select back up to brain archive. So this creates a BRZ file. That's uh, a brain archive file. By default, this is very important. I would be the only one that could export this BRZ and actually extract it into the brain application. So by default, there's a safety mechanism that makes it so it's still my brain only extractable with my login credentials. That's not what I want. I want to share this brain with the world. So I'm going to click on anyone can restore this brain from uh, the exported file. I select where I want to save my brain to. I do need to change that location. And I'll save this on my desktop. So I just switch this to desktop. I can rename the BRZ file, save that, and click on backup. And the progress bar, as you can see, takes place right up on the top. And eventually here on my desktop, I will have 
the BRZ file. There, it just appeared, and right there on my desktop, I've got this Laura Bloom furniture. It timestamps when this BRZ uh, take, uh, took place. BRZs are great for archiving a brain, or if you need to copy a brain uh, to sort of take it in a new direction. A lot of people make sort of brain templates, so to speak. So it's sort of the they've got a new customer, they've got a brain with all the different steps for that customer. They extract it, rename the brain, and add all the information for that customer. Customer number two comes along. They get that customer template brain, extract it, add all the information for that customer. Uh, so there's a really a lot that you can do with those BRZs. But again, it's a great takeaway for presentations and for meetings so that the information that you've just shared in your fantastic new brain presentation uh, can go on with all of uh, your audience members. And that's exactly what's going to happen with all the brains that I've shared with you today. You will all receive a link to the recording of today's webinar, as well as links to the brains that we've demoed, uh, whether you want to see them online or download your own local copy. That's completely up to you. Um, and with that, I'm going to actually go ahead and jump into the question panel. And we'll make this webinar uh, interactive as well. And I do see a lot of questions. Uh, just so you know, I am flying solo today. We're almost on top of the hour. So I'm going to get through as many questions as I can. And uh, if I do skip over your question, I apologize. Send a note into support at thebrain.com. We're happy to answer any additional questions that you may have. Um, uh, so Scott wrote in first, uh, love the brain, old customer from early, oh, Lowe's in 2000. So yes, Scott, I, uh, I know you by your nickname. Yes, Scott, nice to hear from you again. Just a quick question on security ports, data security, et cetera. I know there's a cloud version, but DS has asked about security aspects. So I think that you're saying your company is concerned about syncing to the brain. Scott, first and foremost, because I know I'll forget something, send a note into support at thebrain.com and we'll send you some information on syncing up to app.thebrain.com. Off the top of my head, we have a 256-bit, I think it's called AES uh, encryption. Passwords are salted and hashed and not accessible by anybody at the Brain Technologies, which means, Scott, when you sync a brain, I can see that, Scott, you have an account you have synced a brain. I can see the brain, in full disclosure, I can see the brain name. Can I see any of the contents? No. I can see how much room it's taking up on our server, uh, but I cannot access the data in that brain. It's protected by you and your password, and I cannot access it. Uh, but for the, and so your, your upload, your storage, your download, it's all encrypted. And again, for full details, send a note into support, and we'll, um, we'll answer, uh, you know, give you some more thorough answers there. And also there's no third party access to any of our data. We don't resell our customer list. Um, and again, we just simply don't have access to the brain that you've, uh, that you've synced up to the cloud. And Manuel asked the question, when you get a chance, uh, can we, when can we free move thoughts where we want? I missed this feature. So Manuel, I understand. You're talking about an old feature that we had in, in version eight of the brain called expanded view. And that's an active feature request. And basically that rule allowed you to, uh, I don't think I have eight installed right now, so I'll just try and visualize it for you. I would basically be able to, in expanded view, here we'll turn on expanded view. I would basically be able to say, oh, I want then and now to be locked into position right here. And I would let go and it would stay. Or shipping needs to come down here, lock it in, expand it, and it would stay. That was called our expanded view. And it's known that that feature is, is being requested. And that's the documented feature request under review. So you might see it at some point in the future. But uh, no current active development uh, on, on implementing that feature again. And Jose had the question, can the brain be used uh, with AI, machine learning, or deep learning? So um, I would off the top of my head, you know, it really depends on the data. You can import all different types of data. Um, we are developing an API so people can basically 
people will be able to say, all right, this database, even as it grows and evolves, visualize that over here in the brain. That's something that is in active development, and we do plan on publicly making it publicly accessible in some capacity in the future. But right now, thoughts are created, you know, thought by thought. Um, there's ways of creating large groups of thoughts at one time, and there's ways of importing data, whether it's in an Excel spreadsheet or an outline or even an Excel document uh, can be imported into the brain. So I would uh, encourage you to click on File, Import, and look at the different options there. And if you have questions about any of these, their proper formatting or can it handle a file this size, that size, what have you, again, send a note into support at thebrain.com. We've got samples of all those file types so you can sort of get an idea of, of the pattern or the, the layout, and then you can try creating your own to import into the brain. And Mark asked, how do I create the initial thought? So the initial thought is created when you create a brain. So if I say file and I say create brain, and my brain is going to be named Mark, that is going to be the initial thought. So the brain will be created. It's randomly going to take one of the different wallpapers or, or themes that either I've customized or that is installed in the brain. So there's my Mark brain. That looks a little dark and ominous, so I'm going to change the background color to light blue, and then I'll start creating my brain. So the initial thought is created, and that's called the home thought. So anytime I click on home, it goes directly to the mark thought. Let me click away from it, then I'll click on home. Uh, but you can go to any thought in the future and say, all right, right click and make this my home thought. So, uh, ba -ba -ba. I'm skipping over it. There it is, set as home thought. So now that's my new home thought in my brain. So in a very large brain, you can say, all right, this brain was created years ago, but this is my new home thought, uh, the, what I'm currently focused on. Make that your home thought. So when the brain launches, you go right to that thought and move on from there. And uh, Manuel asked, uh, without stopping the presentation, uh, you can, uh, can you add on the fly? So I think you saw that I did that during the presentation. Whether you're in presentation mode, expanded, one of our expanded views, uh, whatever brain it is at any time, let's say here I am in the Mark brain, and I go up to options, and I go, or excuse me, up into view, and I'm in presentation mode, and Mark says, uh, I like woodworking too, woodworking. But yes, without even pausing the presentation, I can create new thoughts and, and take this discussion, this presentation, this interactive meeting in a new direction by creating new data on the fly, absolutely. And uh, Mark also asked, how do I create, uh, oh, the initial thought. So I think I got to that, Mark. And uh, Lou asked the question, when setting up Wander, how can you focus the content instead of uh, showing 100% of whatever you have built in the brain. Um, when setting up Wander, how can you focus the content instead of showing 100%? So you're never going to be able to say in Wander mode, Lou, show this grouping of thoughts over here, but not this grouping. If you wanted to do that, you would need to make a copy of the thoughts you do want to share in their own brain and wander through through that brain. So wander mode is it's completely random. It just goes to the next created thought. What you could do is, let's say you had a, sort of two branches. So uh, Mark is created in woodworking and uh, something really dirt bike racing. Uh, dirt bike racing. So, but Mark doesn't want anyone to know that he's interested in dirt bike racing. So I right click and I simply unlink that thought. It's floating out there, but it's not connected. So when I go into Wander, and I forget what my keystroke shortcut is for Wander, so I hit Escape, and I go into Options, Wander. Wander is always going, going to navigate to a connected thought. In Wander mode, it's showing up there in my past thought list, but it's never going to go to that dirt bike racing thought because it's not connected. So that's one way to sort of how shall I say it, protect a branch of thoughts in your brain 
disconnect them, make a note somewhere in your brain of what needs to get repaired once you're done with your presentation. But that's one way to avoid wandering off, wandering off into uh, uh, in another direction. And David had the question, uh, Jefferson and Madison created the Democratic Party uh, to oppose the Federalist Party. I did not know that. So thanks for that information. I will add that into my brain. I won't do that now, but maybe I'll, I'll save that for, um, I'll make a note of that, uh, save that for another presentation in the future. So someone knows their stuff out there. Um, Lou had the question, uh, is there a general rule of thumb on when to use a type versus a tag? Various advantages must be uh, driving the reason. Can you discuss? So Lou, there's really no right or wrong. It's how you perceive that information. And what's really important is, um, I would say just knowing the, the rules of thought types and tags. You can only have one thought type to a thought, but you can have multiple tags. So if I go into my Laura Bloom furniture brain and we go directly to Tom Turlington, and I'll turn off this expanded view. So here I am on Tom's thought. Tom is a distributor. He's always going to be a distributor. Um, so that's sort of his, his title. And I can see my other distributors, Midwest Furnishings, Morris, and Slumberland. So Tom is a distributor, but he's got many different attributes. He's uh, ordered over 100 items. So he's a sales plus 100. Um, he's also a current focus. I've got a calendar event associated with him, and I have my notes. This is a feature that can be turned on and off if you want to see calendar items um, or see if a thought has notes without having notes open. So as you can see, I've got many different attributes appearing, and I can hover over them, current focus. I can hover over this tag. So I can have multiple tags on a thought, but only one thought type. And hopefully with that information, you'll decide, well, what's really going to work best for me is using thought tags. Or you'll find, hey, I want to use thought types for uh, their sales level, a VIP, gold service level, silver, bronze, and then my thought tags will be, they have an active order in, they're two years past due, uh, they're canceled, you know, whatever the case may be. And they may be a number of different, you know, they're, they are two years past due on a payment, so therefore they're canceled. So there's two tags being used on one thought. Whatever works best for your environment, there's no right or wrong. And you can always go back and change. So I can say to a tag, uh, top secret. So these are the top secret projects I'm working on. If I want to make this a thought type, not a tag, but a thought type, I simply right click and convert. So I can convert a tag to a type or a normal thought. I can convert a normal thought to a tag or type, et cetera. So in this case, I want to convert this to a thought type. Okay. So now that appears when I hover over the thought. New designs, those are top secret. And I, um, it's top secret. I see that when I hover over that thought. And uh, uh, Jose says, I was told there would be free software. How do I get it? You can get that at www.thebrain.com forward slash download. That's where you can download the brain. And again, we'll be emailing you with links to all of these brains that you can download and expand, extract those into your brain and use these to play around with or use them to uh, uh, sort of just get ideas for how you're going to build your brain or You've got a furniture company. You think this is a great layout, but your modern furniture and vintage furniture have different names. Go in and delete what you don't need, add what you do, and use this brain as a starting point. Um, I doubt you would need this brain, but uh, we've got many different brain examples that you could, uh, could use. And uh, Hans had the question, uh, to show pictures, spreadsheets, tables, et cetera, in the presentation, is there only uh, the way to use these slides as icons or single thoughts, or are there other possibilities to show slides as we know from PowerPoint? Um, yes, so I think I, uh, Hans, you asked that question early on, um, and I think I showed you that you can also paste the attachment there in the content window. If I've got a Word document or a spreadsheet associated with the thought, I'll have a plus tab. 
and I'll say here I've got a Word document associated with this thought. I can just click and launch. Uh, there's a little problem with this preview button. It doesn't work in all environments. Um, it's, a, it's a Windows thing, not necessarily a, uh, a brain thing. Uh, but there you can see I've just launched, this is a blank document, but I've launched it here, or I could click on the preview. And hopefully preview is working. No, it's not working for me right now. Um, so don't rely on that preview button. That's a known issue that recently came up that we hope to resolve soon. Uh, Excel spreadsheets will pre, not Excel, excuse me, um, PDF files will preview automatically and web content will preview right there in the content window. So yes, zoomable icons, notes, or previewing the files and documents or launching them in their native application, all possibilities within the brain. So I realize we're 10 minutes over the hour. I'm gonna get a bit five, uh, five more minutes to answer. Hopefully we'll get through the rest of the questions, but I'll cut it off in five minutes. And again, I skipped through a few, I apologize. I'm not even reading the ones I'm skipping, so I'm not being selective. Just send those into support at thebrain.com if I, I don't get to you. I'm really skipping for ones that people have had to leave the, the, uh, the meeting. But Lou is still here and Lou asked the question, with a lecture format like what Matt is doing now, the audience is along for the ride. In a more collaborative discussion-based environment, a meeting with the brain uh, could go off the rails. How do you set up to manage a good discussion without getting uh, whipsawed around? Well, first off, I've never heard the term whipsawed before, and I'm gonna start using that in my everyday language. So Lou, um, yes, it's true, everyone's on mute today. So no one could say, excuse me, Matt, I've got a question. Why don't you have this information? Or where's, where's that information? And obviously the brain can't um, answer everything for you. It's whatever you've put into it and it's up to the presenter to say, you know what, you're right, I don't have that. But what I do have is, and go somewhere else in the brain. So, um, you know, the brain is, is your tool to, uh, to give your presentation. Obviously, not all the information is always going to be in there. Uh, um, it might have been Lou, maybe it was Mark that knew the information about Madison and Jefferson, etc. I didn't preserve that information. I don't have it. I can add that into the brain as I go. So here again, Lou, I think you asked that, you know, before we started this question and answer, answer session. And uh, it's really, I think it's really up to the presenter to, to keep things on track and just say, hey, I'm limited to what I have here. But I can also do a search uh, within my brain. Do I have that information? I'm gonna go into my teaching and learning brain and let's see what I have on Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson, we can go right to the, and this is a sample brain, so I don't think I have any of that info. So I can add that info on the fly. Created the Federalist Party. And I'm gonna double click on Federalist and link that to the Federalist thought type. So I can get directly to that Federalist thought and start reading about what a Federalist is. Oh, and I do have that falling under American political parties under political spectrum, et cetera. So I've got a lot more information than I thought I had. But regardless, the, the search keeps you on track of, of what you have, the data you have, but you can also add new information on the fly if you feel that you are getting whipsawed through your presentation. Um, and the next question came in from Meta. Hello, Meta. Meta is a longtime user of the brain, very active on our discussion boards. Thank you, Meta, for joining today. And uh, Meta asked the question, uh, do you have any specific suggestions or recommendations for using the mind map view during presentation? Yes, I do. I didn't share mind map view today specifically for one reason alone. Mind map view takes up a lot of screen real estate. And I present in this environment on in low res, basically. Uh, anything I click on, any animation, it's going through the bandwidth. And even people write in from time to time, oh, we lost sound or your the screen is skipping. It's it's the go-to meeting, whatever it can absorb through your internet connection, or I can send through mine. So therefore, I present on a low resolution. Now if I was presenting this and I had a big screen behind me and everything was lightning fast and, and keeping up, because basically that was like my second monitor, I could go into a very, very high res 
I could minimize the notes, go full screen with the brain before I go into mind map view. And as you can see, mind map view, if I right click and activate this thought, Mind map view takes up a lot of screen real estate. You can also play around with shrinking your font size so that you can see more on the screen. And if I want to expand the Federalist or let's see, capitalism, we'll expand that. Uh, wealth of nations, we'll expand that thought. So it's up to me to decide in the United States presidents, I don't need all of them on the screen at one time so I can minimize. So uh, it's really how much screen real estate you have, uh, minimizing your notes. If you're presenting with notes and digital content that's showing up in the content window of the brain, then mind map view might not be your best option. Or if it is, put your notes on the bottom. So expand, mind map is a very, not linear, horizontal view, I guess you would call that. So I wanna switch my notes from being on the side to being on the bottom. So it's really just all about layout. If you're gonna be using mind map view, uh, make sure you've got the screen real estate, practice ahead of time with the layout. Navigating through mind map view is a little bit different than normal view. To activate a thought, I need to right click and select activate thought. Or I can use my keystroke so I can go up with my keyboard. I'm using my arrow keys. Let's go into history and hit enter. And now let's navigate order courses and hit enter. So it's up to you to uh, be comfortable with, with the view, to test it out ahead of time and make sure you've got the, the screen real estate. And so I'm gonna select the last question. I see more questions coming in and I'm sorry, I'm not gonna get to all of them. Benjamin is asking, I just noticed you can use the arrow keys to navigate in presentation mode. I just did that, so fantastic, yes. You can use arrow keys and hit enter to activate a thought. So great, I can get to Jeanette's question. Oh, Jeanette just says, thanks for the presentation list. I had no idea who Chester Arthur was. So I'm glad you learned something new in the presidential area of our brain. There's a link to that, uh, that brain on our, our brain as well. And uh, Meta says, Matt, good to know about mind map resource usage, thanks. So thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. We covered a lot of ground, so you will be receiving a video recording of today's webinar, so you can watch it again at your own pace. And again, if you have any questions at all, feel free to write into us at support at thebrain.com. We're happy to hear from you and give you a hand. Thanks everyone for joining. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And as always, enjoy your brain. Thanks everyone, bye.